Yubani Kingsley 2 Divine Revelation, The Time is Over Part 2 Continued from Part 1 Inside the Gate While I was following the angel, he brought me into a building. The building had many rooms. They Angel opened one of the doors to the rooms and he asked me to come inside and see my master. As I was about entering the room, I saw somebody who was facing the wall and was crying. Then I stopped and stood at the door. I was embarrassed when I saw the person. Then I said to the angel, I thought that heaven is a place of joy, but why is that person crying instead of rejoicing? And he said to me, Kingsley, you insisted that you wanted to see your master, come and see your master. I told the angel the second time that I was informed that heaven is a place of joy, but why was that person crying instead of rejoicing? The angel said to me, Kingsley, now look at your master, then I told the angel that he wasn't sure of what he was telling me. When I said that it was as if the angel became angrier at me. Then he said to the person, your son, Kingsley is here, and the person turned and looked at me. When he looked at me, I saw that his eyes were red, and the tears that were rolling down from his eyes were as thick as blood, and I was shocked. The person who was crying was Jesus Christ. When I saw him, I said to him, My master, why are you crying, but he didn't talk to me. He only made a gesture with his left hand which indicated that I should go out of that place, and I pleaded with him to at least say something to me, but he didn't. Instead, he kept on making the gesture with his left hand. Then at a time, while I was still pleading with him to talk to me, he turned and looked at the angel in an angry manner and the angel asked me to follow him and I went out of the room with the angel. My joy is restored. When we came out of that place, tears started rolling from my eyes. I asked the angel the reason why Jesus Christ was crying, and he said to me, in a low tone, it is because his, Jesus Christ, time is over and his people are not ready for him, and that was the reason why he sent me to tell you to put more effort in order to save more people. Then I told the angel that since my master wanted me to put more efforts, I would like to know the Result of the efforts I have already put from the time I started sharing the message titled Another Warning Then the angel said to me, Kingsley, this is the result of your efforts, from the time you started sharing the message titled, Another Warning, 15,174 15,174 People who were once born again have repented and among this figure, 300 and five, three hundred and five, have genuinely repented from their sins. Then the number of people who became born again for the first time after hearing or reading. Another warning is fifty-nine, fifty-nine, people. These are the result of your efforts. Then the angel asked me to go and do what I was asked to do, and I started coming back to this very evil world of sin. But as I was walking along the street of heaven to the first gate, the whole walls became a screen, and what I was seeing on those walls was, Kingsley, run, the time is over. I did not run. Instead I began to walk very fast from that very point to outside the city. When I came outside the city, a wind came and carried me to my room and inside my room, I saw my body still lying down on the bed exactly as it was when it collapsed. Then the same wind came and pushed my spirit into my body, and I got up. When I looked at the time it was 5.39 a.m. I relocated from Abbott to Port Harcourt City of River State on the 29th of September 2012. The reason why I relocated to Port Harcourt is not that I like living in it, but because God asked me to do that in order to tell his people there the truth which the ministers of the gospel have refused to. Tell them, only because they don't want to become poor or lose their members. They want to secure their stomach and their pockets. On Thursday, 25th day of October 2012, I went to bed having in mind to wake up at midnight to 
praise God, and which I did. I woke up at I 32 am. When I woke up, I found out that my body was so heavy as a result of the strenuous work I did on that very day. I couldn't sing songs of praise. When I knelt down, I was struggling with myself. My spirit was willing to praise, but my body was very weak. I kept on struggling to praise God in songs. And while I was doing that, a bright light shone in my house. Then I turned, and it was Jesus Christ that came into my room. I was happy seeing him come into my room, but when I looked at him, I saw the anger on his face because the appearance of his face shows that he was angry. Then I became afraid. Having taken a long look at me, Jesus Christ did not say even a single word to me instead he turned back and left my house. As a result of that, I became so much afraid that I began to plead for mercy. Then two nights later being 27th of October 2012, I was just praising God the way I used to praise him when a bright light shone in my room, and Jesus walked into my room. Immediately I saw him, fear gripped me, but when he saw the fear in me, he stretched his hands out and said to me, Son, peace be unto you. Do not be afraid. I am your master Jesus Christ. I am he who was, and he who is, and he who is to come. I am the one who died on the cross to redeem all who will believe in me. I am the first and the last. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the owner of your soul, the author and the finisher of your faith. I am he that created you and chose you to be my witness to all human race before you were born. I have seen your love for me and your efforts to my work. I love you so dearly. I will reward you with eternal life if you do not go back and remain faithful to me. I will not abandon you if you keep all my commandments. Do not be afraid. I am here to tell you that I still love you. I want to take you to heaven to show you what is happening there now. Having come closer to me, Jesus Christ crossed his right hand on my shoulder and said to me, Son, I want to take you to heaven. Can we go now? And in response, I said yes to him. Then he removed his hand gently from my shoulder, and my body remained still while my spirit came out of the body. Jesus Christ held me on my right wrist and said to me, Son, let's go now. And we left my room for heaven. Then Jesus Christ took me to a place where the saints were staying. When we got there, the place was so bright as a result of the light that was radiating from the body of those people, and I could only dim my eyes in order to see them well. Those saints were not singing but they were shouting, Hallelujah, 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 the time is over, and they were extremely happy. After I had watched these people for some minutes, Jesus Christ took me to another place, and when we got there, I saw angels shouting the same, Hallelujah, 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 the time is over. Then Jesus took me took to a street. What I saw in that street is still making me afraid. In that street, I saw another set of angels who were matching in a unique way. Each of them was having a trumpet in his hands but the angel who was leading them was holding a bigger and longer trumpet. Jesus then, said to me, Son, these angels you are seeing here are going out to the world to blow the trumpet. These are the things that are happening now. I am showing you all these things so that you will go and tell the world that my time is over. I want to rest. Ever since I died on the cross for humanity, I have been crying for them, but the people I am crying for are not showing concern about my pain. Furthermore, Jesus Christ said to me, Son, I have tried. I want to rest. I can't continue to cry. Although Jesus Christ said that he can't continue to cry, yet he was still crying while he was talking with me. And while Jesus Christ was still crying, he turned and said to me, Son, I am 
happy that you are putting more efforts in doing the work, but do you know that you are leading people to hellfire? Having heard that I was leading people to hellfire, I asked Jesus Christ, how? And he said to me, son, when women were asking you about how they will be keeping their hairs, and you were telling them they should not be attachment on their heads and they should not be using wool to keep their hair but you keep on telling them to be using thread to plait their hair. Don't you know? That thread is also an attachment. Then he asked me to follow him to hell that he wanted to show me something, and I followed him. When we reached there, he brought a woman out from the pit of hellfire, and he said to me, Son, take a look at this woman. She is from Deeper Life Bible Church. She heard that it is a sin for a woman to plait her hair with any type of thread, but she didn't believe it. When she died, she was found guilty of using thread to plait, and as a result of that, she went to hellfire. When I took a look at the woman, I saw that she plaited her hair with plastic thread. The woman was pleading for forgiveness, but it was not granted to her. Finally, she was sent back to hellfire. However, I asked Jesus Christ the reason why he didn't forgive the woman when she was pleading forgiveness, and he said to me, the woman was given several warnings through revelation, and through people, but she refused to take correction. Instead, she took herself to be perfect in everything. Let he who thinks he is stands take heed, lest he falls, 1 Corinthian 10 12 Son Jesus said to me, Do you know that if the woman had taken correction, she would have saved many people and herself because many people were looking up to her as their role model, but she had led many people to hellfire, therefore she must go back to hellfire. However, while was asking for mercy, she wanted to move closer to Jesus Christ when a loud voice said, Go back. And a terrible wind came and carried her back to hellfire. Really, this shocked me. After the woman was taken back to hellfire, Jesus Christ brought out a man from hellfire. When the man came out, it was as if the man had little relief by the way he was doing. I looked at him. I saw that he had some cuts, wounds, all over his body, and he was looking unpleasant and unattractive. Then Jesus asked the man to tell him how he was feeling and the man said that he was feeling relieved. Having answered so, Jesus said to him, Do you know that the way you were feeling inside the fire was how I was feeling when you were teaching my people what would please them? Instead of what would please me? When you were not telling my people all the truth about my kingdom, I, Jesus Christ began to feel the heat of hell fire all over my body. You disappointed me, you will go back to the fire. When Jesus had said all these things, it was as if the wind were waiting for him to finish his conversation with the man before it carried him back to the fire. When the wind had carried the man to hell fire Jesus Christ brought him out the second time. And when the man came out from the fire an angel brought water from heaven to Jesus Christ. The angel carried the water in vessels that looked like big buckets of paint. The vessels were two in number, and the angel carried them on his hands. These vessels were sparkling white in color. When the angel brought the water, Jesus Christ asked him to pour it on the man, and he did. When the angel had poured the water on the man, Jesus asked him how he was feeling, and he said that he was feeling relieved and he was happy. He began to thank the Lord Jesus Christ and to be precise, this was what he said, Thank you Lord Jesus for pouring water on me. Oh. Thank you. Lord. I am okay now. I am better now. Lord Jesus thank you. While the man was thanking the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said to him, Now listen to me. When the people I commissioned to preach my word preach what I want from them, and a soul. Repent from his sinful way, did you know that the same you are feeling now is the same way I always feel? Whenever a soul repents from his sinful way I feel like some water is poured on my body, and I feel relieved. 
but as my ministers are preaching what I don't want from them, I feel very hot like you were feeling inside the fire. Furthermore, Jesus said to the man, I called you to preach my word undiluted, but you messed up. You joined a group of preachers who were preaching their philosophy, their stomach, and themselves, and they influenced you. You left what I called you to do for me, and you started doing another thing. You pleased people and displeased me. You made name for yourself and disappointed me. You built and gained many houses in the world and lost my kingdom. You made Satan happy. And you nailed me to the cross a second time. What did I do to you? Testify against me tell me. What I offended you with. You trampled the grace I gave to you under your feet, and because of that many who thought you were doing the right thing and were following you have gone to hell fire. Why did you do these to me? You told them that Christianity is in the heart and not in the appearance, and many people were misled by you. You made my death on the cross of no effect. You destroyed my efforts in saving lives. Can you hear the voice of the souls you misled to hellfire crying? What you did is still bringing many people to hellfire, and as a result of that, I will not spare you. You must go back to hellfire. You that worked iniquity. When Jesus Christ finished talking to the man, I heard a loud voice that said the wages of sin is death, and the soul that sins will die. You must reap what you had sown. Therefore, depart into eternal damnation. And immediately, a terrible wind came and carried him back to hellfire. Child of God, I want you to know that from the time Jesus Christ started speaking to the man till the time the man was sent back to hellfire, Jesus Christ was crying. And when I looked at the way he was crying, I pitied him because he was crying like a woman whose marital relationship was broken. His heart was broken. Then Jesus said to me, Son, I want you to go to the world and tell my people what I have shown you. Wherever you go, hold your right ear with your right ear and tell them, He who has ear, let him hear. Tell them that I, Jesus Christ said, No woman should plate her hair with any type of thread, and no woman should add or attach anything whatsoever to her hair. I, their Lord and Master, hates those things. I am not the one that asked them to be making use of those things. It is human beings that chose to be using those things, and not me. 1 Timothy 2,9-10 In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with modesty and sobriety, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, ten but which becomes women professing godliness, with good works. 1 Peter 3,2-4 While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. 3 Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, for but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of a great price. Ezekiel 44,20 Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long, they shall only pull their heads. Jesus said to me, Son, tell the women that their hair must, I repeat, must be as natural as it is created to be. They must not apply any dye or relaxer to it and they must not weave their natural hair with any artificial materials. All they should do is to plait it naturally or be combing their hair. And if it grows to the extent that they find it difficult to comb it, then they should scrape it to a level in which they can be combing it. However, no woman should remove all the hairs on her head because that will be very shameful to her as a woman except in the case where her hair is permed then she must remove all the hair on her head, and when she does that, she must always tie her head so that no eyes will see that she has scraped all her hair. This she must always do until her hair grows up to the level in which she can start combing it. Secondly, tell my people who are married, that any person who is wearing a wedding ring should 
remove it because I am not the one that asks them to be wearing it. It was human beings that decided to be using it as a token of the marriage vows without my approval. I, the Lord, I hate both wedding rings and every other ring. I also hate all ear rings because they are manufactured with the same kind of materials and they are idols. Thirdly, tell my people that watch is used to check the time and not for fashion. Therefore, if any person wants to wear a watch, he must wear a watch that is a plastic belt or a leather belt and not a chain, and it must be very simple and inexpensive. Nobody should wear expensive things whatsoever because I hate it. I want my people to be very simple always. Fourthly, the belt is used to hold the clothes firm to the waist. Therefore, if any person should wear a belt, it must be very simple, and not fashionable, and it must not be a chain belt. I hate jewelry as wear. The head of the belt must be very simple and of moderate size, not big. Furthermore, tell the men that their hair must be equal. One side must not be higher than the other. The same is applicable to their beards. And whenever they have their hair cut, they should not carve it. They must leave their face like that. Leviticus 19 27-28 You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall you mar the corners of your beard. 28 You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks on you, I am the Lord. Both the female and the male should not wear any clothes that are tight to their legs and they must not wear any type of jeans clothes, whether skirt, trousers, shirts, or blouses or knicker. I hate it. In addition to that, tell the woman that no part of their breasts should be seen. They must cover their bodies very well, and the back of their body should not be seen also. They must not wear a skin-tight dress or short knicker under their skirt because I hate all these things. What they should be wearing are underwear and inner pants. Please, this isn't trouser because pant is also referred to as trouser in western countries. This is common tiny inner pants usually worn by both men and women. The women should not wear brassiere that will make the nipples of their breast to be noticed. Because if they do and a man become seduced by it, the person through whom the man was seduced to immoral thought has committed sin without knowing it. Moreover, women should not wear any type of clothes that will make their inner panty line to be noticed because I, Jesus Christ, hate such a thing. Having given me all these instructions, Jesus said to me, Son, you heard what that man did to me when he was alive and you saw where it landed him. If you fail to give my messages the same way I gave them to you, and if you fail to spread the messages around the world, you will see yourself in the same place, and that is hell fire because I will not pity you. I am sending you to the world to tell my people that the time is over. Let him who has an ear to hear, hear what I tell my people. Son, Jesus called me and said, I want you to know that you are going to be accused of what? You didn't do, and there's going to be rumor against you. This is what Satan, the Lucifer has planned against you in order to destroy the messages I gave to you and also to discourage you but don't be discouraged when these things will start happening. Be courageous and be focused because Satan cannot destroy the messages I gave you. I, Jesus Christ will defend the messages because I gave them to you to deliver my people from going to Hellfire, but my anger will rest on any person who will try to destroy the messages. I have told you to be courageous, but if you fail to do so, my soul will have no pleasure in you. Finally, Jesus brought me to a certain point and said to me, Son, my peace I leave with you. Go back to the world. My peace I leave with you. I am with you always, I will not leave you or abandon you. I will always love you. Go back to the world and do as I have instructed you. Because my time is over. Then he waved his right hand to me which indicated that he was saying bye bye to me, while I started corning to the world. When I came back to my house, 
I saw my body still kneeling down exactly the same it was when. I left the house to heaven, and as I was looking at my body, a wind came and pushed my spirit into my body, and I opened my eyes. When I looked at the time it was 4.02 a.m. Having read this book, child of God I want to tell you that my hands are cleaned from your blood. If you go to hellfire, you will have yourself to blame. I wish you heaven at last. Beloved, it is out. Of the Lord's mercy you have received this message yet to keep this holiness realities you need to. Be disciplined in order to know how to keep your daily walking relationship with Jesus.